he was my baby. He was my baby. He was a smart young man. This is Caroline Ouko, the mother of Ivo Otieno, speaking with PBS alongside famed civil rights attorney Benjamin Crump regarding the horrific death of her son at the hands of the mental hospital staff. And as a warning, the footage of the incident is deeply disturbing. Security camera footage from inside Central State Hospital in Virginia shows Otieno being forcibly dragged by a multitude of security officers as he's cuffed, as well as shackled by the ankles. Otieno is then taken to the ground and is laying on his side as four security officers put their body weight on his legs, midsection, chest, and neck to continue restraining him. We then see even more officers get involved after a few more minutes of them brutalizing Otieno, escalating the already violent and lethal situation now that he's on his back. As a sheriff's deputy grabs his hair to apparently restrain his head, 911 calls from staff also paint the picture of the cruelty from these officers. How far are they coming from? Where are they coming from, South Side? Ma'am, they're coming, and they're coming as quickly as they can. We have a, a motor vehicle accident also. They're coming. This is, this is just totally unacceptable, and y'all know it too. That's in addition to seven sheriff's deputies already charged with second-degree murder. He was my dad. They smothered the breath out of my baby. They murdered my baby. His family has now seen video of the fatal incident. At what point do we stop preserving life? At what point do we consider mental illness a crime? Prosecutors say Ochieno died of asphyxiation after being held down for 11 or 12 minutes. Restrained so brutally with knee on his neck, the weight of seven individuals on his body while he's face down. Benjamin Crump spells out the situation perfectly. So far, a total of 10 people have been charged with second-degree murder in the death of Otieno, including seven sheriff's deputies and three of the facility staffers. Crump would go on to say that Otieno needed a helping hand. What he got was an overdose of excessive force. He was trying to breathe. If you were down there restrained and all of these people on top of you, you would be trying to breathe. You would try to move too, to let your lungs expand. With another one of the family's lawyers, Mark Kreitas, expanding on Crump's statement, saying that everybody has an obligation to intervene in that circumstance to say, no, that's not right. But nobody intervened. And then when his body was lifeless, and his pants were dangling on him. They didn't do anything. You know, I close with this. We are supposed to have some comfort in loved ones going to a mental health facility to get the treatment they need and then leave a better person. They are not supposed to leave said facility the way that Mr. Otiano did. This level of distrust through all these stories that we cover is a failure by the state in oversight of these facilities, including the field of policing. And I say this, we always hear from, this is bipartisan, practically bipartisan, about officers in the line of duty. Well... Bad apples. Bad apples. That's why you need the good apples. How many stories have we brought to you that show many of those bad apples infect the good apples? And or the good apples get paid leave or are removed from their position and spit out into another department because they went to the head of the police in that local precinct or they went to other authorities, reported said abuse, and will let go. There is too much power. There's too much influence for all of these people to get away with this stuff. 
And there's nothing, nothing stopping them from doing this. A good apple would have stopped this. A good apple would result in Mr. Otiano living and being the person he was before he went into that facility. And yet here we are.